and we are live uh gmgm GM. uh hello everyone thank you all for joining uh this time uh, it's just me um anna is on mater maternity leave my name is daniel olarte and i will be your host today uh please say hello so i don't feel so lonely on this stream say, say hello in the chat let us know where you're joining us from uh this call will begin in about Four, four minutes just to let people join uh, the call. As I said before, this is Daniel joining from Colombia and uh, very happy to be here um, bringing Cuneco back for a very special um, occasion. Uh, hey, Charles, Mariano, Luke, Maya, Monty, Seb, hello, hello. Welcome back to those who are coming back. Nico, hi. Good to see you all. Alvaro, welcome. Celso, bon dia. Javier, welcome. Laurence, of course. Hi. Lando, Focus Pilot. Good to see you all. Always good to see you, Eric. Welcome. Thank you for joining. Good to see familiar faces on the chat. Familiar names, I guess. Two minutes. Uh, I'll wait two minutes for people to join, and then I'll get started. We do have a full agenda today. Uh, Pedro, hello. Welcome, welcome. Angelo, hi. Good to see you. Hi, Victoria. Hey, Merrick. So happy to see your name here. Welcome all, welcome all. Uh, this is Cuneco, uh, our community town hall. And uh, just to repeat, uh, my name is Daniel Olarte, I'm part of the DevRel team at the Celo Foundation, and I will be your host today. I believe we can uh, get started, uh, but please continue saying hello in the chat. Um, I know, next Cuneco will have music. Uh, this time it was just me. Next connect will find me a co-host uh, who can help me run the call so I can have some space for music. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, ch shout out to Anna who has always been my co-host, but uh, we miss her a ton. Okay, friends, so let's get started. Um, agenda for today. So we have four items on the agenda. Um, we have a cell to update with uh, Mariano Cortesi, head of engineering at C-Labs. He will take about 10 minutes to, to talk about cell two, and then I uh, will gather some questions from the chat if there are any uh, for Mariano to cover. And then after uh, Mariano, we have Tosin and Charles giving an update on um, on Minipay and um, the cell ecosystem growth in Africa via Minipay. Again, they will take about 10 minutes and they will take questions for five minutes. And then we'll have a short intervention 
from Alon to, to talk about CelloCamp, uh, which is also aligned with MidiPay this time. And then finally, I will invite Luke and Monty to talk about Cello Public Goods. So yeah, today we have um, a great agenda and uh, let's get it started, right? So I'm gonna ask Mariano to come to stage. Hey, Mariano. Hi, Daniel. Hi, everybody. Uh, nice to see be you. here. Good to see you. So uh, yes, so Mariano, uh, the stage is yours. Um, take it away. Cool. Um, yeah, so today I guess I want to talk about this, the state of uh, Cello 2 project. And uh, I guess I'll be asking Daniel to help me with the slides. So please go to the next one. And I guess the first thing to remember here is what's actually our goal here. Um, so we embark in this journey where we are trying to choose what is the best L2 stack for Cello. Uh, and to me, it's actually very important to remember that we were not trying to do which is the best L2 stack. I think that's kind of like a, an impossible job. Uh, what we are trying to do here is like, okay, let's think about what we like for Salo. What are the important features and things that we want uh, for our specific problem, which is actually not just launching an L2, it's actually migrating an L1 to an L2, which is actually a much more complex thing to do. And and so with that thing in mind, it's like, okay, what, are, what is the best option for us, you know? And please go next. So to kind of talk about, I guess the challenge is huge, but I want to just talk about like just a few features here that I think are important. Um, I think there's a big question, which is kind of this kind of feasibility question, you know? And what I mean by that is like, is this possible? You know? Can I do this? Um, there's a couple of things you need to know. The first thing, well, Cello, it's uh, EVM compatible, but still have like subtle differences. So getting technical, you have uh, this kind of different type of transaction where you can actually pay with uh, uh, different fee currencies like UCT, UTC, CUSD. Um, and, and we need to keep that, no? And there are other things actually we need to keep on the protocol. And so, when migrating or using another style, we need to be able to see if like, hey, I can I can I add these features? How how easy is to add those? Um, can I make everything work as, as it was before? Um, the other thing that it's also quite important is like, well, can I do this migration? No, and by migration, what I mean is like the idea is like we're going to launch an L2 and like I don't know um, what happened with the old one. It's like imagine this is going to be kind of like a hard fork. No, it's going to be okay. Block, um, I know, a thousand. We have L1 and block a thousand and one. It's an L2, and from the end user experience, nothing has happened. Like everything works at the same, you know. And that's actually a very complex achievement, right? You cannot do that, you no. Know? And again, when you are analyzing the stacks, you need to understand, hey, how easy, how feasible is to actually do this with this stack? And different stacks have different solutions. Uh, but that's actually a very important thing. I guess when you're talking about feasibility, I guess you need to also add time in consideration. Like, I guess you could say everything is feasible if you have 100 years, right? Um, the thing is that you want to make things feasible with some like reasonable time to production. Like, you want to say, okay, I don't want to take three years to do this. I want to take the minimum time possible, or at least a reasonable amount of time that uh, it's kind of best for the ecosystem. And so that's to me, that's like another important thing, no? Like, you need to combine feasibility with like this kind of time to production. Um, I guess I'm going a bit deeper and just kind of like keep the set of protocol. What are these protocol? Right? Where, so um, there's some technical things there. For example, as I said, like easy fee or this like ability to pay with alternative fee currencies. Uh, that's huge. And I think that's one of the biggest like uh, differentiator for Solo. Another thing that is also very important for us is this one block finality feature. Um, this is also goes in the design, and you need to make sure that you can actually achieve that with the different protocols or different stacks. No, um, I guess for us it's important because Celo has always been like a very strong in payments, and I guess these are actually important things for for a payment system. The other actually quite important thing is you need to have very low gas fees. Uh, this is a function of I guess um, there are some design decisions that impact you know, the cost of uh, of transactions. And so how you design the system, how you do that, is going to have an impact on how low the fees can be. 
I guess there's another part on, on fees, which is kind of goes on, on congestion pricing and, and, and how scale is your system, no? But there's another part, so there's, there's kind of these two parts. Um, so these are kind of, to me, maybe the, 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 the big unblockers, no? If you answer this question, then like you, you have something that you can work with. Of course, there's many other things. And so when we step into this, we, we start thinking, okay, what's, what's the process? So uh, then, please the next. So when you go about the process, well, the first thing we ask ourselves is, what's our role? What's CLAB's role here? Uh, we are not decisors here. We are not going to make a decision. Uh, I guess this is the community for the community to decide. But we figure it's kind of like a, the same thing when, when you want to you know, buy a car and you don't know a lot about cars. So you go and you go to the mechanic and you ask the mechanic, hey, how, how what, what should I choose? And, the other is like, what do you want? And then you start like trying to make up questions and, and it's going to provide some suggestions. So we see ourselves kind of in like similar piece situation. Now we, we've been working with the um, core technology. We've been actually developing that. And so we, it's kind of our thing. We understand that. Um, so I think we have in, we are in a good position to go and try to analyze these stats and say, okay, this is what we recommend based on, I guess, what, what, what are the inputs of the things that are important for the community. Um, and that's actually what we try to do. Uh, and we put this kind of to the side, trying to aid the community. And for that, you've seen that we have like first like launch this kind of framework, um, which team share uh, on the forum. And we outline, okay, this is how we're going to uh, analyze all these protocols. And this is what we're, how, how we're going to do stuff. Um, so next piece. So, I guess jumping like a um, few months um, like into, into after that, it's like well, here we are. We probably already seen the the forum post. Uh, we ended up like uh, the, with a proposal. where actually we are actually choosing. Uh, I guess proposing is like the OP stack, no? And I think um, I have to say okay. Within the framework, there's a lot of uh, categories, and if you go to the forum post, you're going to see for each category, how are we thinking about that? But I think in the end, we ended up like, focusing on these kind of three criteria, which I think were like the most important ones that we end up like seeing, no? and so where we could put up most of our focus. So as I said actually before, time to production is one. No? And I think OP stack is a very good choice for that. Um, I guess there's a first, maybe you start from like similarity of technologies. It's very similar to technology we actually use already. Um, I think also they've been like a, they've been going like a long way on specking everything how OP stack works and you have very good documentation. It was really straightforward to go and see. Um, and of course, uh, if you were to move to more uh, different technologies, well, you imagine that like it's going to be harder if you try to do something with CK. It's going to be great, but it's also going to be a lot, taking a lot, a lot more time to to achieve that. Um, and so we thought like okay, OP actually shines in this category in comparison. And, and we see that as actually a very important thing. Uh, the second part is this uh, Ethereum alignment. And this is actually, uh, I guess, has come with like a, a bit of like how we're thinking about like uh, the world and how these things evolve, you know? And what I mean by that is like, I think we, we, we started even before saying we're going to be an L2, we're trying to say go closer to Ethereum. You no, know? we want to be uh, following Ethereum and, if even has a roadmap, it's it maybe sometimes it seems like it it moves slow, but it does move, and you want to kind of follow that. And sometimes you have this eagerness to go and do something faster or um, sooner because you have that ability. And um, but sometimes that actually uh, it's kind of like shooting yourself on the foot. No, so like we we actually went through that. No, we had EAP fifteen fifty nine even before Ethereum, but then Ethereum implemented that and it was actually slightly different to our uh, implementation so that start creating like these kind of little incompatibilities that sometimes it's, it's manageable sometimes it's actually more chaotic and so we believe that actually probably the best strategy is to try to follow as close to possible to ethereum which comes with a with a cost actually which is okay maybe i'm going to say no to these very cool features that i could use out there i don't know i could use native account abstraction i could use these other cool things that you have well and and but you need to be very very strategic of what kind of 
incompatibilities, which is uh, trying to uh, do something sooner, uh, you do because it's this kind of this game where you're playing. And so in that sense, I think OP has a very strong alignment with Ethereum and actually it's one of the primary like uh, goals. And so in that sense, and that's why I think it's, it's a very good choice for if you are looking the strategy this way. And finally, you have this kind of positive some um, platform growth opportunities. What does this mean is no, I guess I see like, um, Blockchains are ecosystems, are and 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 at, at economies, you know? and and in that sense, when you are choosing a, a stack, you are potentially choosing or uh, joining a whole ecosystem of other L choose or other projects that are working with the same technologies, and so that actually expands the possibility of collaboration. And I think again, OP has done a very good job at that and has become a bit of a a standard, I guess you, you see a lot of projects actually using OP and you have, a, an, 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 at the same time, there's this possibility of like going and joining the super chain. And, and again, I think it opens the doors to many possibilities. And that's how I think that like, I think which is very important and very interesting for us. Um, okay, um, that's kind of for, for the proposal. And maybe I will end with like a bit of the next steps. Um, Daniel, next. So, the day after, you no. Know, as I said, this is a proposal. This is how Celo suggests to the community. Uh, the most important thing that needs to happen is to vote on this. Uh, and so we will have in another call, and we will be basically um, then doing the, the, the governance proposal. Uh, after that, and if that actually like happens and people agree with this uh, proposal, what we are thinking is like trying to do this, this kind of test net. You no, know? and we want to again. We, it takes us some time to make the decision. It was a very hard kind of decision. We want to try to move as fast as possible. And so that's why we are already thinking of, okay, this testnet, how that could be. Um, again, this would have two very important things. One is going to implement everything of Celo. So you basically it would be Celo uh, in a way. And the second thing we are going to be migrating some like, let's say Alpha Horus into this uh, testnet. And so by doing that, it will basically be testing this whole like I can basically hard fork Alpha Horus and I get something that works the same and no one really notice. Um, and we're thinking that again, we we can do that by summer twenty twenty four. So I think I'll stop there and I'm ready for questions. Yeah. Thank you, Mariano. Um, so everyone, please type your question on the chat. I will ask the questions. I will read the questions to Mariano so he so he can cover them. So we have a first question here from Laurence. Uh, she says, thanks, Mariano. This was a great overview. How did C-Labs weigh decentralization? OP stack decision is fantastic, but one negative is this, the central, centralized sequencer. How is C-Labs thinking about that and future decentralization? Yeah, great question. So I think, uh, first of all, decentralization is not, I would say it's not a feature itself. It's more of like a, a solution to something, right? What you try to do is like have these kind of trustless systems where you don't need to trust someone else, where you don't need to, where these, there's no central power or some power that actually can I know, do things like censoring. And so, Decentralization, it's a solution to that. And I think there's sometimes other solutions, no? Um, so that's just to frame this. I don't want to just ourselves like to, to, to say, to, okay, this is something I need. It's more like, I want to solve this problem, which is trustless systems. Um, now, um, our original proposal actually include the idea of like using OP with a decentralized sequencer. Um, and I think sequencing itself, it's like a, a topic that has been evolving. And I think there's like many aspects to it. And we, I would say, actually, we are still exploring that, but I, would, I wouldn't go and say that by choosing OP, you are basically choosing to do a centralized sequencer. Um, um, the, I, I, to us, the idea is like, we, we, there's again, different options. And I guess we, you, you have, I don't know, I, just to name a few to, to give you samples, right? Um, you could you could basically run OP and run our own decentralized sequencing with using uh, reusing PVFT. You could, for example, go on, I know, 
um, use share use some shared sequencing and like I know use Expresso. You can go into base sequencing that what's kind of Justin Drake has been proposing. So I think there's many options, and I and like choosing OP doesn't really restrict you to nothing there. And so I wouldn't say this is actually choosing or saying anything about sequencing itself. We are not proposing anything particular about sequencing. Um, we are just proposing the the OP stack part. Okay. I have another question, and I believe this is the last question, so we um, keep uh, so we keep the time. How will the new fees compare with current levels? We haven't really done a, a, a strict comparison in that. Uh, I guess we haven't really do the, the, the fine print, uh, but in, in in our sense, it should be around the same. Um, I guess. Um, when when you are um, analyzing fees, you need to analyze. Uh, I guess there's two parts of a fa of a fee. I would say there's the cost of a transaction. How much does it cost to the system to actually do this? Um, and there's a part that is more of like has this kind of congestion mechanism. Like when the system is saturated, then you need to start uh, people start competing to for a place, and that leads to price increases. Um, so the part we are actually interested in at first is like this cost, you know, and all two have a different cost structure because you need to pay for the A and you need to pay for um, all one fees to to send things out there, right? It depends what you want to send. Um, now, in, 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 in the whole design, what we are actually doing is like uh, we are... Um, we, we, we are we've been exploring the idea of like using off-chain DA to make sure that fees are going to be low enough, you know? And I haven't really, I can't really give you like a point-to-point -point comparison or like a very detailed like number comparison, uh, but the, 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 the expectation for us is going to be the, the same kind of fees. Like we're not going, that, that shouldn't change in a way, in a meaningful way. Thank you, Mariano. Um, I do have to move to the next speaker. Uh, there was another question in the chat that if you can cover later, I will appreciate it. But for everyone else that is, um, is interested in Cell 2, there is a community call planned uh, with C-Labs next week to cover all the details and more questions. If you continue to have questions, I'm going to paste the link to the event here on the chat. Um, so please join us. Uh, this is happening on Thursday next week, May the 2nd at 10 a.m. EST. Uh, Mariano, thank you so much and uh, see you soon. Bye, buddy. Bye bye. Okay, so next I am going to invite, um, I believe, Tosin first and then Charles to talk about uh, mini pay. Hi, Tosin. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, Hi everyone. Yeah. Um, the floor so is can, yours. Yeah, sure. So you can start the slides. So um, I'm me, Sorry, forgive me. I want to uh, erase the banner that I have here for some reason. It's not letting sorry. me. The banner of the question. OK, I got it. Um, OK. Right. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Tosin. I'm the Web3 product manager for um, at Opera. And basically, I'm here to talk about, tell you a little about Minipay, which is the dollar stable coin wallet that's integrated into one of our browsers, Opera Mini, um, launched on Celo last September to tell you about um, some of the milestones that we've passed and, um, you know, the growth that we've been able to achieve as a part of the Celo ecosystem. You can go to the to, to the next slide, the, the next one. You can basically start to first page that actually has something. Um, so this is going to be split into two. I'll be taking the first part, which is actually reviewing um, the road so far, um, quarter one of 2024. And then my colleague Charles will take the product update after. You can go to the next slide. Um, and then the next slide still. So, so far, um, happy to share that we have crossed 2 million wallets. We actually crossed 2 million wallets um, sometime in March. Um, and with those 2 million wallets, we've been able to generate a total of actually over 10 million transactions. Um, now we have 
10 cash partners. We have integrated seven dApps, seven seller ecosystem dApps, and are live in five countries. So we are live in Nigeria, Kenya, and Ghana, and we currently have Uganda and South Africa in testing to be live soon. Um, next slide, please. So a part of driving adoption for Celo dApps is I mentioned that we have integrated seven dApps in total um, inside Minipay. So Minipay has a Discover page, which is basically like a dApp browser where we have connected directly to some of these dApps um, and basically abstracted the process of Connect Wallet. So now users, all the users that are going into Minipay, all the 2 million users that um, are currently activated now are have automatic exposure to all of those dApps. Some of those dApps are HelloFi and Park Market, BitGifty. HelloFi is a savings dApp that allows you to save into USD um, and earn yield. In Park Market, we have Learn and Earn, which um, allows users to take courses and um, also get paid for doing that. And BitGifty is a dApp that actually allows users to pay local bills in Nigeria, Kenya, and Ghana um, in CUSD. We also have Block Scratch, which um, is essentially on-chain missions. We also have Daily Claim dApp that is just um, uh, like a copy of Good Dollar. So it's universal basic income, allowing users to claim um, that on a daily basis. And we have a daily game, which is um, play to earn model, allowing users to play games and earn CUSD from those games that they play on a daily basis. You can go and for these dApps in total, we've generated a total of six thousand visits, six sorry six million visits for um, all of the ecosystem dApps, and we think that that's a, it's an amazing number, right? So um, these are dApps. These are six million people who. Um, maybe before now they didn't know, um, you know, about dApps. They didn't know a lot about Web3, but now they're able to interact with those dApps um, with very low effort. You can go to the next slide, please. And so I mentioned BitGifty, which is a case study. So as a part of Celo Camp Batch 8, we actually mentored BitGifty. Um, and now they're live in Minipay. And we worked very closely with the team to get the, to get the dApp out. Um, they're now... Users in Minipay are now paying bills via BitGifty in Nigeria, Kenya, and Ghana. And so far, they just went live um, less than a month ago, but BitGifty has been able to process over 5 million Naira in local bills paid, which is about 500,000 Kenyan shillings, um, which is really, really impressive. You can go to the next slide, please. Um, and this is just a quote from the BitGifty team about working with the Opera team, um, you know, them talking about how important it was to them and how closely we worked to them, we worked with them, mentored them both on the product side and when it comes to marketing um, to get the DAP to, uh, to the point where it, it is today. You can go to the next slide, please. And another case study is Block Scratch, um, which also went live on Minipay uh, late last year. And so far, Block Scratch has generated over 2 million visits and now generating about 600,000 monthly interactions. And Block Scratch is a great use case because it really shows the potential that um, X to earn use cases have. Block Scratch is essentially like a dApp that allows that offers missions for um, users to complete and then um, pays them a reward in exchange for completing those missions. Um, you can go to the next slide. And these are some examples of just co-marketing campaigns that we have launched with the dApps that we have integrated. On the top left, we have a Valentine's Rewards with Block Scratch. It was just a limited time campaign. Um, where we had daily cards that users had to complete in order to claim the reward. And then we have also um, a cold marketing campaign with HelloFi that we helped promote internally inside of the... So as I said, Minipay is integrated inside the Opera Mini app. So that means that we're able to also promote these dApps via in-app messages and push notifications to users who have Opera Mini installed. And um, on the bottom left, we have um, Impact Market, Learn and Earn with Impact Market. And the bottom right, we had an Easter cashback campaign with Fun Bank, which is one of our um, on-ramp partners that are integrated into the, into the app. Next slide, please. Um, and then talking about Shake and Win. So um, starting in Opera Mini, we've introduced Minipay as the main payout method for some native gamification campaigns that we have in the browser. An example of that is Shake and Win. So, and with Shake and Win, uh, last year we ran an edition and we're able to generate 
over 80,000 new wallets through Shake and Win. So essentially what Shake and Win is, is a little game inside of the upper mini browser where people shake their phone and they stand a chance to win prizes. And not only did we make um, creating a mini pay wallet a uh, and a challenge for people or for the users who are playing this game. But we also paid out prizes, um, over 14,000 prizes, 14,000 winners through sh from Shake and Win. We paid them in CUSD. Next slide, please. Um, and then I'd like to talk a little about our ambassador program. So uh, we launched our, our ambassador program at the end of November last year. And now we actually have 200,000, uh, sorry, 200 student ambassadors. We had 100, but we just expanded to 200 new ambassadors um, across 80 higher institutions in Nigeria and Kenya. And our ambassadors have helped drive over 120,000 new wallets. So as you can tell, that's a lot of wallets per person. Um, and we really like what we've been able to build with this ambassador program because we really think it's about nurturing these small communities. Um, every student in every school has kind of built um, is a smaller, you know, mini pay ecosystem, and every uh, every school has now ha now ha kind of has its own little mini pay hub that um, that is super active and super engaged. You can go to the next slide, please. Um, and these are just some screenshots of our ambassadors driving user stories on social media. We have our ambassadors kind of going out to some local Web3 events to talk about mini pay. We have um, them talking about you know buying some things, paying some of their fees through the funds that they've been able to earn from, um, from the ambassador program. Uh, and we also even have them kind of making their own little ads um, and posting on TikTok, posting on X and posting on Instagram, which is really, really refreshing to see. Next slide, please. Uh, and then we have a little video to show you, um, which is essentially um, users in Nigeria talking about Minipay. Mini pay because it's very easy. I like mini pay because mini pay is easy to use. Mini pay is swift. Mini pay is awesome. I love the app. Mini pay has been a very great platform. I love mini pay because it is easy to use. Let me answer that question. Mini pay. Damn, that's fast. It is faster. It is quicker. It is smooth. The mini pay on Opera has been a very good innovation. I provide better than the previous uh, form of payment. That's my favorite, it's very easy to access. You can easily operate your mini pay wallet in as much you can read and write. It makes things like crypto, which is complicated, easy. It takes very, 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 very little time. I tops two minutes for you to register using your mobile number. With the Google Back of Crypto, I'm very confident that my assets are safe. Even if I'm not with my phone, my assets are already back up. I will advise anyone willing to, you know, uh, make use of mini pay. Long live Opera Mini, long live mini pay. Love you all. So we hope you enjoyed watching that as much as we enjoyed compiling it. I think the main comment that we've gotten from people is that MiniPay doesn't feel like a crypto wallet. And <clears> yeah, we love that. So I'm going to pass it along to Charles now, who's going to cover the product update. Thank you, Tosin. Um, yeah, I mean, MiniPay is really about simplicity and it's great to hear that our users see that in the product. Um, so I just wanted to give you now a, a bit of an overview of what we shipped uh, in the last quarter and a bit of a preview of what's coming. Next slide. Um, first of all, like, we're also, we're not only building the product and doing all these activities that uh, Tosin mentioned, but we're also kind of bootstrapping a use case ourselves through Opera News. So we, Opera has a different product called Opera News where we have content writers writing content every month. Uh, and these people are based in uh, everywhere in Africa. And we're starting now to use MiniPay and Cello Dollar as the payout method for, for these people, um, which they really appreciate because they, that gives them access to, um, to a stable form of value and very easy to use in, in MiniPay. So we've now started that and uh, we're paying out over a thousand writers every month through that. Next slide. One thing we've shipped um, this, uh, this quarter is uh, AdCash and Withdraw 2.0. Um, 
that's that's kind of our internal name for it. But basically, that's the cash in cash out experience uh, within uh, MiniPay, which is super important, right? You want easy payments and easy ways to get in and out uh, with local currency. Um, and we've taken an approach there where we integrate with the best partners um, and some many times multiple partners within the same region to really have the best coverage and the best prices. Um, and we expose that through this uh, quote selector now where people can feel confident that they get the best deal um, and the best experience with their local payment methods. Next slide. Um, another big pain point of typical kind of cash in cash out experience in, in crypto wallets is, you know, it's hard to to know where the money is right? when it's uh, going from fiat and to crypto and vice versa. Um, so we've done a deeper integration with every one of these partners uh, using webhooks that allows us to provide live tracking of the status of the user's transaction so that users never um, left out in the unknown uh, thinking where, where their money is. Next slide. Um, we've also added the ability to send a payment with a message, uh, a note, an emoji, or, or some short, uh, short, uh, short message, um, and that's integrated right in the send view. Next, um, another feature we've we've shipped and have started experimenting uh, with on the marketing side is cash links. So cash links are literally links that contain cash. Uh, so when you don't have Opera Mini um, and you receive one of those links, you have the whole um, kind of integrated app install flow. Um, and it, once that's done, you jump right into MiniPay and claim this link, depositing it to your uh, newly created wallet. Just want to show you now what it looks like if you go to this uh, next um, video. So we've dropped, uh, I think, hundreds of these links now over Twitter, and people are sort of tuning in, if you will, uh, at a precise time to tap that link, and <laughs> everyone's kind of racing to to claim it. And it's really uh, the, the first one that does it that uh, gets the money. So we've we've uh, been running that uh, over the past month, and it's been hugely successful. People really get excited about these these drops. Next slide. Um, also super interesting and, and relevant for, for, um, for Africa is, you know, the ability to do payments without data, right? It sounds like magic, but, um, because MiniPay is part of Opera Mini, which is a, a huge app that also has, um, oftentimes free data promotions, right? So people browse more for less using MiniPay, using Mini, um, then MiniPay uses the same free data. So even if they run out of their own kind of data allowance, uh, that data is piped through the, um, the free data allowance and that allows them to transact um, even when their data runs out. Next. Another one that's really relevant for our ecosystem partners is what we call Web3 for Humans. Um, and, you know, as I'm sure all of you here have interacted with, with dApps uh, before and uh, with various wallets, uh, when comes the time to actually sign something, um, it's often very cryptic and uh, confusing, right? And we sort of get numb to all of this being, you know, in crypto and, you know, having trying this day in, day out. But for like normal humans, uh, this is actually quite uh, intimidating. So what we're doing with every partner is decoding every signature or, or contract interaction in a very simple uh, human way. Uh, so, you know, action verb, small description, and decode what are the tokens being exchanged. And we present that um, with uh, these bottom sheets, as you, as you see now. Um, so we're going a bit further than just kind of adding a, a, a link to the Discover section with, with that partners. We're actually you know, really making sure that this is usable and that the language they use in the app is also um, matches the, the signing experience. Next slide. Um, yeah, so, so that's what we shipped um, during this last quarter. Uh, but also, we're, of course, we're not, uh, uh, you know, sitting on, on just that. We're building the, the future and I'm happy to announce that uh, 
uh, soon, uh, Opera uh, Mini Pay will support USDC and uh, USDT on Celo, which um, is a huge, um, it's a huge thing that these two assets are now coming to Celo, um, and we're happy to to support them both uh, in the coming versions. So that's it for the uh, Mini Pay product update. Um, thank you all for listening, and uh, happy to answer any questions you have. Charles and Tosin, I'm going to ask you to um, answer any questions you see on the chat, but I'm actually going to skip the Q&A section because okay. of time okay. and ask Alon to come to stage. Um, Charles, thank you so much. Okay. Uh, BC Quarter. Thanks, everyone. Alon, hello. Hello, everyone. Please take <clears throat> it away. So my name is Alon Shavit, and I'm the program director and co-founder of Upright. Upright is the company that runs CelloCamp. And I'm here to share a few updates about the MiniPay Launchpad. So if you've been excited from uh, everything we just heard from uh, Tusin and Charles, just as we are, uh, I think uh, the MiniPay Launchpad is a great opportunity uh, for you, for any builder in the space. Next uh, slide, please. So, um, and, and another slide. So, um, our mission is to accelerate Web3 founders who go to market in Nigeria, Kenya, Ghana, and South Africa. And it's an eight week program jam packed with um, workshops and mentorship, business development sessions from industry leaders. Uh, I can mention uh, EcoVC and IDO, Presenti, Verda Ventures mentors from organizations um, like uh, MetaMask and Flory Ventures and many other great uh, partners. And um, the camp also presents mingling and collaboration opportunities with other builders in the Celo ecosystem, in our alumni. And I was very uh, proud to see a lot of our graduates uh, on uh, MiniPay. Um, next slide, please. So the reason we are uh, very excited about um, blockchain is in Africa is um, the uh, potential for adoption, um, the uh, still large unbanked population that is there and uh, the 80% um, uh, of the population that has access to mobile phones that makes uh, the continent ripe for mobile first solutions. Next slide, please. And to uh, wrap up uh, the uh, batch eight, uh, we had a wonderful uh, demo day that brought uh, use cases, a, a really wide variety of use cases, um, and uh, almost 700 uh, um, members of the community voted for the winners of, uh, of the first uh, mini pay launchpad. And we are very proud that uh, our grand winner, a bit gifty, got onboarded to mini pay. I can also uh, share that uh, Zoff, one of our uh, graduates, uh, just raised $2.5 million uh, led by uh, the Blockchain uh, Founders Fund. And um, we are just uh, so happy to see um, so many of our alumni continue to succeed and grow in the space. Next slide, please. And uh, yeah, so now is really the perfect time uh, for anyone that is uh, building in web free to um, to uh, to participate if you're asking yourself how can I uh, contribute uh, how can I take part uh, in, uh, in in mini pay um, I think cello camp is a great opportunity we still have 10 more days uh, to apply for the program uh, more than a hundred startups already uh, applied and we onboarded more than 15 mentors that are waiting for you uh, with really great perks prizes and everything you need to succeed uh, building on Celo, building together with MiniPay. So we are looking forward uh, to receiving your uh, applications. If you are finding ways to simplify Web3, if you um, utilize stable coins, uh, use cases like payments, e-commerce, ways to earn, um, to make, to make uh, earnings, um, gaming, infrastructure, uh, any type of uh, use case uh, uh, with real world application and uh, mass uh, adoption potential. Uh, we are very interested in, in uh, speaking with you. Also, feel free to surprise us with new use cases, 
So um, uh, next uh, slide, please. And we have one more uh, extra bonus for you. Uh, we just uh, launched a new track for building uh, on Minipay, which is completely free. Uh, so if you are looking for a resource uh, and, and looking to learn more about uh, uh, how to build and how to integrate, so uh, uh, head to uh, startupathway.com and uh, everything there is, is free. And uh, don't forget to apply at cellocamp.com. Thank you so much. Alon, thank you so much. Um, exciting times for um, ventures joining CelloCamp. Good to see you again. Bye-bye. Good to see you. Bye-bye. Okay. And then next, uh, for the last portion of the call, I would love to invite Luke Weber to talk about Cello Public Goods. Luke, hello. Thank hello. you so much, Daniel. First. In the interest of time, I'll, I'll speed things up a bit more than I intended, but that's, I think, completely okay. We also, what I'm going to speak about today is a summary or kind of wrap up of the first three months of the Cello PG proposal. Um, I also wrote a wrap up thread of that yesterday, um, two days ago. I'll share it in the chat. So if I miss anything, there's more detail in here. Um, but I think it's nice to give it a bit more visual elements as well. You can go to the next slide, Daniel. So there were three main elements of this proposal. There was a governance improvement element um, there was a mental reserve um, sending CUSD to the to the Cello Community Treasury element. And then the maybe most exciting part of this, the Cello Public Goods Funding Budget and Programs. And I'm going to give an update on each of those things. And again, it's also in the forum thread. Go to the next one. When it comes to governance, um, especially prior to the CGP, which was CGP 115, we had a period of multiple proposals going to forum um, and then going up for vote, but not reaching quorum. And it started to get a bit um, almost spammy from that perspective. So there was a lot of things on the forum and on the governance vote. So um, what one of the things we changed with this proposal was raising the um, minimum salary required to submit a proposal from 10 to 10,000. That's still relatively low compared to other um, blockchains in the space. Some of them even have like a million or like 1% equivalent. Um, and we felt 10,000 is a good balance. Um, the result of that is that from the past, um, the 15 proposals after um, the Salo Public Goods proposal, we actually had 93% reach quorum um, compared to 53% only on the 15 before the proposal. So you can already see that the significance of proposals that actually make their way to a vote and then having enough importance for people to actually vote on it to the degree that it reaches quorum has increased a lot uh, with a relatively small change. Another element that we started doing is finally rewarding guardians and CGP editors for the efforts they're doing in cello governance. And as a result, um, we are, we've been able to double the monthly governance calls. Um, and I think that also really increases the amount of dialogue around governance around the cello ecosystem. So I'd consider this really good tracker so far, and I'm really happy that uh, we're actually seeing the results that we we're hoping for. Next page, Daniel. Um, another element of the proposal that was quite interesting is after the proposal, the initial proposal passed, um, stakeholders were flagging, hey, we actually feel that the uh, market is picking up and there was an element of this proposal that included converting um, some of the cello to be sent back from Mento, um, getting that sent back instead in CUSD, but using some form of a kind of conversion rate. Um, and stakeholders said, hey, we feel that it's maybe better to do that in six tranches instead of one tranche. Um, so there was a follow-up proposal that we made, CGP118, to instead of doing that in one bulk transfer that took the 30-day average of one moment, we've done, we're now doing this in six tranches that each take 30-day average from the moment of transfer, which is each 15th of the month. And here's why, well, again, I'm happy to share that the results are positive. Um, so far, we've had three tranches for a total 5.5 million Cello returned. If the prices do continue or kind of if the average price of Cello remains equal to what it has been, we're actually going to be able to still get 84 million-ish Cello back from the Mento Reserve, um, which is about 2.3 million more than the initial version of the proposal. So kudos to those that kind of called out the market conditions. I think we made a bet, but it turned out to be the right bet, and I'm happy with that. Can go to the next one. 
Um, before moving on, I want to do a quick round of thank yous for all the Cello Public Good Stewards. Um, when we started this journey a couple of months ago, we didn't exactly know what we were going to kind of put ourselves into, um, but I'm really happy to be working with each of them. I think that they're really bringing their value. Um, for example, Daniel hosting this Coneco, I think it really shows that that these are the people that should be in a stewarding role because they really care about Cello. You get to the next one. Um, looking at the overall program and budget, so um, a big element of the Cello Public Goods proposal was also providing a bit of guidance on treasury spending for other programs. And there were three programs that received a budget, the regional DAOs, the Cello Project Incubation, and Cello Grants and RFPs. Um, six proposals were submitted in three different categories, and out of those six, five actually passed Cello Governance. Um, for a total of 1.1 CUSD and um, 100K Cello. Um, as you can see in the overview, the regional DAOs have, um, there's $44,000 left for this H1 period for regional DAO proposals. Um, on Cello project incubation, Cello Camp actually passed the governance process, and um, that means that there's no budget left for Cello project incubation. As a side note, there were two other incubation players that came in after the budget was already spent. But we also worked with them to allow them to go directly to the Cello Treasury because we realized that, hey, there seems to be a lot of traction for their proposals, and those also passed. Um, and then on the Cello Grant side, um, we had Presenti submit their proposal, was received really, really well, I think 99% upvotes. Um, and that means that there's about 150,000 um, CUSD left for Cello Grants. Um, another thing to mention here is that when the Proposal was submitted. It turned out that the proposal allowed the stewards to claim 100,000 CUSD too much. So the on-chain element allowed the group to potentially claim more than they were supposed to, according to the budget. And that was the first transaction that happened. So the first transfer was claim 100,000 from the contract and send it right back to the Cello Community Treasury. Can go to the next one. So diving into the specific Cello. PG programs, um, the Cello Public Goods platforms that we have developed, GG20, Climate Round, Cello RPGF, and also the upcoming programs. I'm going to give an overview of each. Um, and at the end, we might actually, I don't think we have time for questions, but um, I'm just going to provide an update on each of them. Can you go to the next one? Starting with the Cello Public Goods platforms. So um, one of the first things we did was build what you see on the right side, the hub, the Cello Public Goods hub because we realized that there's a lot of new terms, a lot of new concepts that we were introducing to Cello. So the first thing we wanted to do was introduce a wiki or like a knowledge base. So initially that was called cellopg.eco, but it's essentially this knowledge hub. Um, and we didn't want to wait for that very long. So we started quick, made a Notion workspace, turned it into a super website, and that was live within a couple of weeks from the proposal passing. And then um, about two weeks ago, we were able to also launch the main cellopg.eco website. And this website includes an, um, includes an overview of all the active programs. Um, it also has a database of over 100 cello projects that are live in the ecosystem now, events that are coming up. Um, and this is something that we hope to continue building on to really provide um, the best in class resource for anybody building on cello and pulling all the cello um, community treasury funded programs together in one website or in one place. Going on next. Um, in order to run these programs, we actually realized that we need a bunch of additional technology. And uh, I'm very happy to say that that deployment of that technology is going really well. Um, a lot of these teams have been super helpful in often without any cost deploying these things on Cello because they're excited about what we're doing with Cello Public Goods and the direction we're going to. Um, so one of it is Ethereum at the station service. It's one of the most more popular new tools. It allows for on-chain at the station, which is kind of saying, hey, me as Luke, I attest that let's say Pedro is a great builder and then Pedro can use that at the station as kind of a proof saying, hey, Luke, Luke, Luke said thanks that I'm a good builder. You can also imagine using that maybe for climate action, having a reviewing group making at the station that your project is really making an impact. Um, another, uh, another tech stack that was deployed is the Easy RPGF solution. That's the open sourced version of what Optimism used for their Retro PGF program. And in order for that to work, we also have deployed HyperCerts, um, which are digital blockchain based impact claims. Um, in addition to those three who are already live on Salo today because of the program, 
We also have the Gitcoin grant stock going live um, in about a month from now. And we're in conversation with Karma Grantee Accountability Protocol, which is an additional layer of kind of insights and information built around all the tools I mentioned above. Um, and what you get with that is essentially end-to-end, -end, completely verifiable on-chain, proof of impact, and a database of all projects. And it just allows um, us to operate more efficiently and better streamline resources to the people that deserve it. And I think that's part of this whole program of Celo PG is making sure that Celo governance and Celo community treasury is able to understand and properly fund the teams that are having the biggest impact on Celo and on the world. And especially with Celo moving to Optimism, who are really the, the, the grandfather of retrospective public goods funding on chain, they also use all these technologies. So the projects participating in the Celo PG programs, they're not just able to earn some resources from Celo, but they're also beefing up their potential and their knowledge to also participate in other public goods funding programs like the Optimism Retro PGF um, program, which on itself is over $100 million a year. So it's a really big opportunity with Celo moving to the Optimism stack to get more and more capacity in our ecosystem to use these tools, show our impact and show everything we're doing in the world and get extra resources for it. You can go to the next one. So this one was actually supposed to be presented by Monty, but I think in the interest of time, I'll try to do a TLDR. Um, this is one of the active programs we have right now. It's the GG20, so Gitcoin 20 climate round. Um, it's a collaboration between Celo PG, the Climate Coordination Network, who is a spin out of Gitcoin, who runs the program. We also collaborate with the Climate Collective, one of Celo DAOs or Celo Community Treasury funded groups who have committed 10,000 CUSD to the program. Um, we have seen 115 applications to the climate round. 68 of those have, re have requested to be matched by Celo as well, um, because we're matching up to $50,000 in total to these projects. If you are a project building in climate or you want to support the projects building in climate on Celo, you can go to the tiny arrow at the top. I think Monty will also share it here. Um, your donations mean a lot. And at the end, we'll be distributing the 50,000 CUSD accordingly to these teams. To the next one. Another one is Celo RPGF. This is the Celo version of the retrospective public good funding. We initially um, have a budget of 250,000 Celo to allocate to any team that has contributed to Celo in the past. Now, so far we have 18 applications and the application window is going to close on at the end of the day on the April 30th. However, there is a chance that we might extend that with a couple of days because we're essentially aiming for about 50 projects. Now, one nice thing about this Celo RPGF program is that it allows us to get a really good updated insight on who has been doing what on Celo. And that's great, not just for Celo RPGF, but also for helping them get other types of funding, whether that's from us, from Presenti, from Optimism, or any outside funder. So it's really something we're doing. And if you're building on Celo, consider applying um, to sell RPGF. On to the next. Um, recently, there, um, and this is something that's actually happening right now, um, it became clear that there's a need to support small validator groups on Celo. So last week, I started working with Justin from C Labs to think about a way to reward um, Celo, um, active Celo, Celo validators with an additional kind of stipend. Um, we got some nice feedback in the governance call yesterday. And based on that feedback, I'm now working with some validators to improve the draft proposal that we have and work towards a retro validator program that can really be the best and first of its kind program that rewards active validator con uh, contributions. Nice. Let's go to the next one, just on time. Um, for everybody here um, that is interested in the future of Celo and wants to participate in conversations like this, I'd love to invite you to Celo Gather. It's a community-led conference we're organizing on the 24th of May in Berlin. And we're going to have presentations like today from um, two, three, four times the stakeholders that you saw today, but also have the room for experimentation and conversation together to figure out what the future of Seller looks like. Luke, that was awesome and uh, perfectly timed. We, this is six minutes, 60 minutes after we started this call. Thank you all for joining. Um, thank you all for your hard work and your contributions to the Celo ecosystem. And uh, just a reminder that Cuneco is back, hopefully uh, on a bi-monthly bi basis. Uh, uh, 
Uh, so stay tuned for more. And then just to reiterate, uh, please attend the call next week, the community call with Silas to, to talk more about um, Cell 2. Um, thank you all for joining. Uh, really a pleasure to be here sharing this space with you. Have a good day and a good weekend. Goodbye. Thank you all so much. Ciao, ciao.